So the mechanics. I'm just reminding you of the procedure of calculating an independent sample t-test. We need two values. We need the mean from each group, and we need the variance from each group. And we also need sample size from each group. Now, mean and sample size are pretty easy to calculate or determine. Variance is a bit of a pain in the butt, especially if you have to calculate it by hand. But in a lot of uh, ways, when you're learning how to do the independent sample t-test, it's useful to actually, actually calculate the variance by hand. And I'm showing you how to do that here. I've made these data available if you want to calculate it yourself. I'll, hopefully I re remember to put a link so that you can practice yourself. But here are the data. So non-smokers and smokers. As I mentioned, I've tried to simulate these data to be quite close to what Brody et al. actually had in their results uh, so that we get the same result he did, or very close. So non-smokers on the left, smokers on the right. And the first thing we need to do is we need to calculate deviation scores in order to calculate variance. Now this, I'm not going to talk about variance in a very detailed way uh, because I assume that you have an understanding of variance before doing the independent t-test, but I am going to do the calculations here so you can actually see that they're actually intimately involved with the independent sample t-test. So it's x, which is any value that's in this column here from smokers 7.3 to 4.6, I need to subtract the mean for the non-smokers. So non-smokers have a brain volume of 5.33. Now I'll mention this was a very specific area of the brain that Brody et al. were interested in, which was in the frontal lobes, which is involved with uh, decision making. So this isn't total brain volume of the whole brain, it's just one section of the brain. So I need to calculate uh, the deviation scores to get the variances. So 7.3 minus 5.3 is 3 is what I need to get for all uh, all values. But for 7.3 minus 5.33, I get 1.97 as a deviation score. And when I do that for all the scores from 6.5 all the way down to 4.6, these are the deviation scores I get. So there is variability. Not everybody has a brain volume of 5.33 in that section of the frontal lobes. There's variability, and I need to estimate that variability. Now, after I do that, I need to get rid of the negative values because I need to sum these, and I don't want to get 0. So I need to square the values. So x minus 5.33 squared. So I just need to square 1.97, and I get 3.88. And then if I square all the values, these are the values that I get. So if I square all these deviation scores, I get these squared deviation scores. Okay, so there's one as big as 4.12. So there's variability. And then I need to sum these values. And this is what people call sum of squares. And when I sum that, I get 18.04. And if I divide that by n minus 1, I get 1.13. So n minus 1, which is sample size here, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So there are 17 people in the non-smoker group. So if I divide 18.04 by 16, I get 1.13, which is the variance. Again, this is really just me going through the variance estimation. I'll make a separate vi video on having a more intimate understanding of variance. So I need to do the same thing for non-smokers, for smokers. I need to calculate the, s the mean, and I need to calculate the variance. The mean is equal to 4.29. So at least numerically, it looks like smokers have a smaller brain volume than non-smokers. It's 4.29 versus 5.33. I just don't know if that's statistically significant or not. I could get that by chance, because the sample size isn't very big. And that's why we do statistics, to find out whether this difference of 5.33 versus 4.29 is statistically significant. But the next step, before even inputting into the formula, I need to get the variance for the smoker group. So x minus 4.29, and when I subtract, say, 4.2, minus 4.29, I get negative 0.09. And when I do that for all the cases, those are all the deviations. These are the deviations squared. And then sum of squares, 
divide by sample size minus 1, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19,